Jeff Raskin, the man who led the Macintosh project in the 1970s, said that as far as the customer is concerned, the interface is the product. And if he's right, then Apple just fundamentally changed what their product is. Liquid Glass, their new transparent adaptive interface, has sparked more outrage than any design decision in recent memory. Users are calling it confusing, problematic in accessibility, and even claiming that it's a step backwards. But Apple doesn't redesign interfaces for a billion users on a whim. So what are they preparing us for? The backlash has been swift and brutal. Social media is flooded with screenshots of unreadable text and confusing layouts. Accessibility groups are raising red flags. Even longtime Apple enthusiasts are wondering if the company has lost its weight. The criticism isn't wrong. Liquid Glass makes many interactions objectively harder right now. But here's what's fascinating. This isn't Apple's first time deliberately breaking something that works perfectly fine. And if you know the pattern, you know what comes next. Let me take you back to 2013. Apple just released iOS 7 and the internet lost its mind. Tech blogs called it the ugliest design ever and users complained it was unusable and confusing. That sounds quite familiar, doesn't it? Within two years, iOS 7's flat design principles enabled responsive design across multiple devices, improve accessibility, and prepared users for a modern interface paradigm. The entire industry eventually adopted these principles. Go back even further to 2001. Mac OS X Aqua was criticized for being alien and cold, yet it established visual metaphors we still use today the dock, transparency effects, modern graphics rendering. Its core design principles survived over 20 years and influenced the entire industry. Even when the original iPhone was first launched in 2007, Steve Ballmer, the CEO of Microsoft at the time, laughed at the iPhone's price and its lack of a keyboard. This obviously did not age well. The pattern is clear. The more innovative and groundbreaking a design decision is, the more likely people are to reject it at first. Liquid glass breaks our existing mental model of how interfaces should work. So what makes liquid glass different? Why is Apple willing to frustrate over a billion users for what seems like an aesthetic choice? Well, that's because it's not just an aesthetic choice. It's a foundational change. Look at Vision OS, Apple's spatial computing interface. If you notice something, the transparent adaptive design directly mirrors liquid glass principles. Apple is gradually preparing users for interfaces that blend foreground and background elements, essential preparation for AR glasses where digital content must overlay physical reality. But it goes deeper than that. Apple's VP of human interface design called this their broadest software design update ever, designed to make technology more intuitive, beautiful, and delightful through deep hardware software integration. Carl Pei, CEO of Nothing, acknowledged it, connecting it to his vision of AI-driven operating system interactions. So what's the consensus among strategic thinkers? Well, it's that Apple is not wrong. They're just early. But there's something deeper happening here. When you look at liquid glass through the lens of design theory, a fascinating picture emerges. Think about how your brain processes information. You don't want to see everything at once. That's overwhelming. You want just enough context to stay oriented with details appearing when you need them. This is called progressive disclosure, and liquid glass does this naturally. The transparent layers lets you see what's behind while keeping secondary controls hidden until the moment you reach for them. Now, consider what happens when you encounter glass in the real world. You don't need instructions. You instantly understand that it can be seen through, touched, and moved. Your brain has decades of experience with this material. Apple isn't teaching you a new interaction language. They're borrowing one you already know. Here's another aspect to add on to that. Those translucent layers create what psychologists call figure ground relationships. Your eye naturally separates what's important from what's background noise. The design guides your attention without you even realizing it's happening. But this is where it gets really interesting. Roger's innovation adoption curve. 
Liquid Glass follows this perfectly, building on Vision OS's success to ease mainstream adoption while maintaining familiar iOS patterns. And from a business strategy perspective, there's something called the Blue Ocean Strategy. Apple is avoiding direct feature competition by creating uncontested space in a unified design experience. Rather than competing on specifications, they are differentiating through holistic ecosystem integration. Now, here's what most people are missing. We're not just moving towards spatial computing. We're moving toward ambient computing, where interfaces respond intelligently to environmental factors, user behavior, and situational context. The material's contextual adaptation capabilities represent early steps toward this future, where Apple intelligence and AI-driven personalization become crucial as computing becomes more predictive and contextually aware. Cross-platform unification creates unprecedented ecosystem value. For the first time, Apple has established truly unified visual language across iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and Vision Pro. This scalable framework prepares for future devices including AR glasses, autonomous vehicles, and smart home integration. The design's emphasis on dynamic morphing and adaptive controls anticipates voice and gesture interfaces where visual feedback becomes even more important than precise touch interactions. Apple is preparing us for multimodal interactions combining voice, gesture, and contextual awareness, and they're doing it gradually, one transparent interface at a time. Now, let's be completely honest here, liquid glass isn't perfect. There are real accessibility concerns. Users with visual impairments are struggling with contrast issues, the learning curve is steep, and some interfaces are genuinely harder to navigate right now. Apple knows this, but they also know something else, the cost of staying behind. Look at the technical foundations. Liquid Glass showcases real-time rendering capabilities powered by Apple Silicon that enable entirely new interaction paradigms. The material's dynamic light bending, specular highlights, and contextual adaptation require sophisticated GPU processing that demonstrates Apple's vertical integration advantages. Competitors lacking Apple's silicon control cannot replicate these sophisticated real-time effects. This creates sustainable differentiation in an increasingly commoditized hardware market. Andy Grove talked about 10x changes, moments when industries fundamentally shift. Liquid Glass could prove as significant as the original iPhone interface revolution. The timing exploits competitors being distracted by the AI race, while Apple focuses on systematic design evolution. So here's the reality. Apple's Liquid Glass represents the rare combination of aesthetic innovation and strategic foresight that defines transformative design leadership. The design faces resistance precisely because of its most forward thinking. By gradually introducing transparent, adaptive interfaces today, Apple prepares over 1 billion users for tomorrow's AR glasses, AI-driven personalization, and ambient computing environments. This represents strategic design thinking that uses aesthetic choices to enable future product categories while strengthening current competitive advantages. Most importantly, Liquid Glass demonstrates that mature technology platforms can continue leading through design innovation rather than just disruptive hardware. By preparing users for next generation computing paradigms while strengthening current ecosystem advantages, Apple has created a design foundation that will compound in value over the coming decade. The question isn't whether Liquid Glass will succeed. It's whether competitors can match Apple's strategic vision and execution in preparing for computing spatial, AI-driven, and ambient future. Early resistance typically signals the most significant and forward-looking design innovations. And if history is any guide, in five years, we'll all be wondering why we ever doubted it. <laughs>